In this video, we're going to explore how we can create clickable points here. So, or at least when we click on this, that we can track specifically which line we are clicking on and as well the index number. You can see here if I click on this here, it will show you every one of them. But here, we have two items. If I click on this, we will get two items here as well. So I click on the line red sales and of course at the black sales with index number of three. So let's start to explore how to do this. So let's start to look how to track which line and data point has been clicked in Chart.js. So what we're going to do here is first of all get our default code, which you can find here on chartjs3.com getting started. This specific link is also available in the description box. Scroll down and then just copy this entire chunk of code here. If you want to understand what this code does, make sure you watch this video here that explains it all. So what I will do now is I'll paste all of this in here and then I'll just cut out this title, put the title in here, save it and refresh. So now we have a bar chart, but what I want to have here is a line chart. So I'm going to scroll down here and copy this data set first, because I want to have two items, comma, paste that in there. Then I will say here, this will be a line chart. Then we have to make sure, of course, that our values are unique. So I'm going to put in here nine. Let's put in here only nine. Nine nine so it will be a straight line so we have here and i'll just uh, grab a color here in this case i'll just get the last color which is the black color so i'll say here this is the black sales finally here above we have here the red color the first value so i'll say here this will be the red sales save this refresh as you can see here now we have this line here maybe we could make the line width bigger so i'm going to adjust the border width here just remove that and same here, save and refresh. All right, so now we have this. So what I want to do now is to figure out when we click, for example, on this item, we should have here the black item or basically the label, the black, which is black sales and also the index, the same here with that one. But of course here will be interesting because here we have two lines uh, intersecting each other. So that would mean that we need to have them both being shown. So let's start to do that. So I'm going to scroll down here the first thing what we need to do is we need to make sure that ChartJS can recognize any click that we do on the canvas. So that will mean that we're going to create here a item. Let me put on some enters. All right. Then I'm going to say here in the my chart because we're going to select this, but more specifically, I want to grab here the canvas itself, which is basically this ID. So I cannot use only this my chart, but I need to be because the my chart is an object in itself. I need to go here into canvas. Why? If I only do my chart, it will trigger not only the canvas as the ID, but also the config and draw everything. And I don't want that. When I click, I only want to make sure that the uh, canvas recognizes a click. So that's what we're doing here. So then we're going to say here dot. And then we say here on click equal. They're going to say here click handler. And this is basically our function. So that will mean that we need to have a nice function here. So I'm going to copy this. I'll say here function click handler. And here we could say click, for example, for the uh, event that is being triggered. And what I want to do here, just console log. We can say you click for now. It will show us that we have clicked and recognized the click. So I'll open up developer tab. If I click here, you can see here it recognizes and it shows a lot of information here. X and Y client, uh, basically the coordinates, everything is in here. Of course, we don't want this. We want to have more specifically this here. Because right now, if I click on this, even though it recognizes here the item, it just doesn't give us any more information. So what I want to do now is start to make sure that every time we click on these circles, which we call shapes or elements, every time we click on those elements, in that case, we need to recognize if it's matched on one or the other line and which index it is. So to do that, charges is built in functionality. So what we're going to do here is we're going to say constant. And this constant can be points equals, and then we're going to say here my chart. We say here dot get elements. Uh, get elements. Make sure you spell it correctly. At event for mode. So basically, and this is a chart.js functionality from the chart.js API. So basically, what it says is get at the element. So the moment we click on the element based on the event. So what is the event? It's a click event because we have here on click. So when we click on the element, and remember the elements are these circles here. If I click on this, we want to grab here 
the specific details. So first of all, we're going to say click, because that's the click trigger. And then what we want to do is we want to get the nearest, meaning we want to get, when we click on it, we want to get the nearest data point being shown. But we want another condition besides nearest, because nearest would, could mean that we click here up, and it would show this one because this is the nearest value. However, we don't want that. We want only if we are clicking on the point indicating that this is an intersect. So we said intersect true, comma, true. So what does this really mean? Well, think about an intersection. It's like a crossroad where two roads cross each other. So in our case, what is the road that is crossing? Is the moment our mouse crosses this imaginary borderline here somewhere that would trigger the tooltip. So the moment we are here triggering the tooltip, that is what we call an intersect. So when we intersect and then click, so clicking within this border, in that case, we want to grab or extract that value. So what I'm going to do here now, if I do here console log, I say points, save that, refresh. If I click now, right now you can see here nothing. And let me just remove this console log here. If I click here, you can see this is blank. Why? We didn't click on the item, but the moment we click on the shape or the element, in that case, we get a here full value, and you can see already what we need. We have here the data set index and the index itself. You can see here the elements has the coordinates as well. So here, we already can see a lot of information. If we do here, we get here even double. All right. So what I want to do now is start to create an if statement, and this if statement will now trigger not because right now, if I just click on the white space, it triggers as well. So I don't want that. I want to make sure that this item is being triggered if there would be any length. So if I click on this, you can see here we have a length of at least 1. We have here length 1, index 0. So I'm going to say here, if point index 0, that's the minimum requirement. In that case, what I want to do is, well, what we can do is the following. I'm going to say here, constant. And let's grab first the data set. So I'm going to say your data set equals. And we're going to say here points. Then we say your dot data set index. And if I do now a console log for the data set, we should now be able to extract that specific item. Save that. Refresh. If I click here, all right. But if I click on this, we get now zero. And probably if we remove this console log now, Save that, refresh. Click here, nothing happens anymore. That's good. So now we click in here, we click on there, there you are. However, here, of course, it doesn't show the other index. So let's start to do that one now. So we have this here. We can just copy this, and I want to also have the index itself, which is here, the data point. So if I save that and copy this, first of all, let's see if they both work. Then click on this, we get here 0 and then 4, index 4, which is correct because this is Friday, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. All right, so now we have this. But of course, what do we do if we have multiple values? So what I'm going to do here now is I'm going to create a for each loop. Because what I want to do is in this points, it will recognize, well, let me show you. Console lock, if I say you bet. Points.length, save, refresh. If I click on this, you should see your number two. Why number two? Because these two are connected. But here, it's number one, because we have a length of one, and here we have a length of two. All right, so this means that we can use this here nicely. So what I want to do here is the following. I'm going to say here now, points dot for each, and then for every item here, I will call this now a, a line. Basically, for every line, I'm going to use here the, uh, function error expression, we're going to loop through this here. And then what we're going to do is we're going to cut out this, put it in here. We can give this a proper indentation. And then what I want to do here is this point here is reference to the line here. So we can change this, put it in there. We can delete all of this. And then what I want to do here just for it, we're going to console log these values here. So I'm going to say here, and what I'm going to use here the back tick. So I'm going to use this is what we call a template literals. So these are back ticks this is on your keyboard below your escape button. And then I'm going to say here, I clicked on line, and then I'm going to say here, dollar sign, 
and here curly braces and the reason why because this is a variable so I'm going to say here now if I get the data set like this we only get a number so I don't want that what I want to do here is I want to get the line label which is this one here red sales or black sales so how do we do that well basically go down here back I'm going to say you started my chart and then we're going to say your dot from my chart you can jump immediately to the data here and from data we can go to data sets and then select the label so we're going to say here dot data dot data sets and then here the index number which is of course this item here the data set we're going to put in here and then dot label if I normally say it's label with an L without the S that's this one here label once we did this we can maybe also say with the index number of and then here we're going to put in here the data point we can say here dollar sign put in here the data point and there we are if I save this now refresh click you can see here now I click online black sales with index number of five so I click here again here again no all right doesn't matter uh, and then here there we are so as we click here I don't know what happened here but that's all right let's refresh see if everything is correct there we are so you can see here now for some reason I just get a weird error but now it works fine so what happened here you can see here when we click on this one here it shows you red sales and black sales at once while the others will only show an individual one here black line and an index number of two and that's basically how you can trigger the click event so if you enjoyed this video there's still a lot more what you can do with a click event for example creating clickable bars with a link which is also quite interesting topic and i highly recommend you to explore that as well which is this specific video clickable bar chart with links so every time you click on one of these bars you will be directed to another page